Hey Game Dev HQ, today we're going to explore the logic and implementation of a random loop table based on weights. Let's check it out. Hey guys, John here and I'm so thrilled to finally get this video out. Random loot drops are insanely popular amongst games like RPGs, adventure games, and anything that has a selection of drops. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you're new to this channel, we create amazing content every week focused on game development for Unity. We partner with Unity to create some of the best courses in the world, and thanks to our members here at Game Dev HQ, we are able to provide weekly free content on our YouTube channel. Special thanks to The Lost 03, Steamed Poet, Sizzle Stank, Six, Pico Dad, Pixel Pup, OJ Zach, Mr. Amacostro, Miss Theos, Dilladoof, Holger, Jack B. Game Dev, J. Jackson 12172, Johnny Flynn, Laurie DK, Lucky Ducky 10, and Matt Gamer. You guys are professional members of Game Dev HQ, and you all rock. Let's get to the video. Here we are in Unity, and I've downloaded three weapons off of Game Dev HQ's file base. So you can see here we have three swords that we're going to be working with. So the first thing we need to do here is we have three items in our game and we want to create a random loot. Well, the way we have to do this is we need to create that table. So we're going to create basically an array which is going to hold the weighted values. So here we're going to say public int and it's going to be an array and we're going to call this table and we're going to assign it equal to the array. So what we want to do here is item one, let's say we want to give it a 60% chance. That would look like this. We put a 60 for item one, a 30% for item two, and a 10% for item three. So basically, these are mapped to each sword. So this is going to be sword A, sword B, and sword C. Now this weighted table here is out of 100. If you wanted to make it out of 1,000, I'll show you exactly how we can do that and the same process will work. What's important here is that you determine how frequently in the order of the items that you want them to occur. So I want item A to be most frequently followed by this one, then this one. If you wanted item C, for example, to be 60%, you can't do this. You can't say 60 there and then 10 here. Um, it's not gonna work well. It's gonna give you, it's gonna really just screw up the weights. So what you wanna do here is associate the item index from, I'd say, you know, most frequent down to rarity. So here you have your 60, your 30, and your 10. Another great way to represent this is if we actually drop this down and you have each one on a line. So here this is going to be sword A, which is most frequent, followed by sword B, and then sword C. So here we have our table. And the next thing that we want to do is we need to look at the logic for calculating a weight in which one we give you. So what is the logic to create a weighted system? Well, the logic of it is pretty simple. Basically, we need to tally the total weight. So what is the total weight here? Right now it's a thousand, but it could be an odd number. It doesn't have to be an even number. It works best if it is a hundred or a thousand. Even numbers tend to work better, but it could be anything. So what we need to do is tally the total weight, and then we're going to draw a random number between zero and the total weight. Now let's run through a scenario. By drawing a random number between zero and the total weight, which is 100 for this example, let's say you get 49, right? So let's say here that random number equals 49. Where on that table do we land? Well, it comes down to understanding how to check this. And what we're doing here is we are checking, we are checking if the random value is less than the current index of the table. So here, if random number is 49, we're gonna create an if statement here going through our table. We need to basically check, is 49 less than 60, which is A, what sword A? Now, is that a true statement? Is 49 less than 60? Yes, well, you get sword A, sword A. Let's look at another example here. Let's say you were to get random number 61. So here, let's say we got random number is 61, right? So random number, we run it again, random number equals 61. Now where do we land? Which one should we get? Should we get sword A or sword B? Well, let's check. 
the logic here is, is random number, which is 61, less than sword A, which is 60? Is 61 less than 60 or less than or equal? The answer is no. So if it's no, what do we do? Well, we need to actually subtract the value from A. So we take 61, which is our random number, minus 60 equals one. And then we check the next one. Is one less than or equal to 30? If it's yes, that's your weapon. That is how a weighted system works. So how do we get 10? Well, if we wanted sword C, you only get a 10% chance. So let's say that you had, let's say you rolled a 92, right? So here we'll say random number equals 92. And what we're gonna check here is, is 92 less than or equal to 60? No, so we're gonna say 92 minus 60. Now we're left with 32. Is 32 less than or equal to 30? Which is our next weight up here. So 32 less than or equal to 30? The answer is no. So what do we do? We subtract 32 minus 30, and now we're at two. And now we check the next one. Is two less than or equal to 10? The answer is yes, you get sword C. And that's only gonna happen 10% of the time. So that's how a weighted system works. You have to go through the table. So now let's take a look at turning this into actual code. The way we're gonna do this here is basically when I hit the space key, we're gonna just draw a random number. So here at void start, what we should do first is tally the total. So let's go ahead and create a variable to store the total. And then in void start, we're gonna calculate it. So we're gonna use a for each loop to do that. Here we're gonna say for each item in table, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the total and I'm gonna add the item. So this is gonna tally up the total. And if I run this in Unity, and now we have 100. And the same concept applies. That same logic we just covered, if I wanted this to be say 600, 300, and then I wanted this to be 100, the same logic applies. We tally it up, we calculate a random number now between zero and the total, which is gonna be 1,000, and then we can do the same process. So let's check that out. Let's keep it at 1,000 here. So the next thing we're gonna do is once we do that, is when we now need to create if statements going through this table. So before we do that though, let's draw a random number between zero and our total. So here, let's create another variable so we can see it in the inspector called random number. And the way we assign this is we're gonna say random number equals random dot range. We're gonna generate a random number between zero and the total of all of those weights. So if we save this and run it, you'll see here it's out of a thousand. And let's take a look at where we land, which item should we return to the user? So random number was 317. So the way we check this is we go through our list here, or we can do this through if statements or for loop. And we're gonna basically say, hey, is the random number less than or equal to element zero? Is 317 less than or equal to 600? Then yes, you get item element zero. What happens if say 552 was returned? Which item are you gonna get? Is 552 less than 600? Yes, so you still get item zero. What if I were to make this 816? Is 816 less than or equal to 600? No, so you need to subtract 600. So if we subtract 600, we're at 216. Is 216 less than 300? Yes, so you get element one. And that's how easy it is to create a weighted table. So let's look at that in action. We know what our random number is. Now what we need to do is create a for loop or for each loop and iterate through our table and compare the random number to each index. So let's do that using another for loop here. For each weight in the table, I now need to compare is my random number less than or equal to the current weight. And that's as simple as that. So here I'm gonna compare, is my random number less than or equal to the current weight? And here I'm checking if random number is less than or equal to weight. And if it is, what does that mean? If it is award item, 
And let's go ahead here. We're going to award item. We'll create logic to highlight one in a moment. And then what we're going to do if it's false is we need to subtract it. So here we're going to say else random number minus equals the weight. Subtract the weight and let's check the next one. So the next time it goes around, random number less than the current weight. And random number has been subtracted. So let's take a look at here at awarding an item. So let's know which item we're going to award. So the way we do this is we're going to say here debug.log and we're going to award plus the weight. This is now going to actually print out which weight we should award. So it's going to print out either 600, 300, or 100. You'll see here that random number was 61, the total was 1000, and it's saying here award is 100. So let's go ahead and actually uh, check that out, make sure that's actually correct. So here, award is 100, and actually, it actually went through. So the first initial random value must have been really high because it subtracted award um, pretty lengthy. We can actually recalculate what the original value was. So here, it got to 100, so let's add 300, that puts us at 361, and let's add uh, 600 to this, which puts us at 961 was the initial random number. And if that's the case, is 961 less than 600? No, so we subtract it. We're at 361. Is 361 less than 300? No, so we subtract it. Now we are at 61. Is 61 less than 100? The answer is yes, you get element two. And it says here, award is 100. So we would associate that with an item in, a, in an actual game. So last but not least, I'm just gonna save this. I am gonna create something to kind of visualize and highlight which item was selected. So here I'm just gonna create a list of game objects to map to my table, which is just gonna be some simple lights. So here my game object, and I'm just gonna say lights. And then from here, when I award the weight, what I want to do is basically I need to know the index here. So I'm actually going to have to convert this to a for loop. And here I'm going to say for int i equals zero, well i is less than the table.length. We're going to increment i. And then here we're just going to check the current weight. So here if random number is less than or equal to the table current index, then we're going to award them. Else, what are we going to do? Else, we're basically going to say random number minus equals the current table weight. There we go. OK, we can save this and test it out. And you'll see here on the main camera, we have lights game objects. I'm going to associate the lights with the weights here. So sword A is going to be the first one. So here, you'll see that both A and B lit up. So what's the issue? The issue is that we continued running the program after we selected a table element. We don't want to do that. So as soon as we set one active, we need to say here, stop the program. So we're going to return. And here, you'll see here that green was highlighted. So we got sword A. And let's rerun it. And you'll see again, we got sword A. So let me go ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to say, let's go ahead and make this maybe like, uh, let's make this 400. You always want to go rarest at the bottom. So this one's going to be like 399. And then let's make this like five. So we should have a pretty 50-50 chance between zero and one here. And there you go. The middle was now called. And you'll see here that our random number generated here is 46. And the total weight is 804. So this one, because it's not an even number, it's a little harder to track back up. But you guys get the picture. So if we actually were to increase this, let's set this one to maybe 200. And let's set this to 300. And let's set that to 400. And let's go ahead and take this one and make that 350 and make this one 400 as well. All right, and there we go. That's how we got sword C. And that's how you create a random loot table. Don't think I forgot about you amazing PLUS members. Thank you for all of your support and we're so excited to have the opportunity to serve you.